Today we're going to be talking about how to use triple integrals to find moments of inertia. And in this particular problem, we've been told that we're to assume that a solid has a constant density of k, and then we've been asked to find the moments of inertia for the solid, which is a cube with side length l, where one vertex is at the point 0, 0, 0, it's at the origin, and three sides of the cube lie along the coordinate axes. So all we're talking about is a cube here with one corner at the origin, and three of its sides extending out along the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. So if we drew a picture of that briefly, what it would look like here if we have x, y, and z, and we tried to draw this kind of in a transparent way, one corner of the cube would be here at the origin, and then we would have one side coming out here, one side coming out here, and one side extending up along the z-axis, and then we could show here the different sides of the cube, and this is gonna be transparent so we can kind of see all sides of it like this, but we'd have something like this would be our cube. You can see where the corner right there is at the origin, and it has three sides along the coordinate axis. So that's our cube, and we need to find the moments of inertia. Well, moments of inertia when we're dealing with a three-dimensional object like this in a three-dimensional coordinate plane, we're going to be finding i sub x, i sub y, and i sub z, which are the moment of inertia about the x-axis, about the y-axis, and about the z-axis. To find the moment of inertia about the x-axis, we're going to go ahead and call it i sub x. That's going to be equal to the triple integral of the solid here, e, and what we're going to do is multiply y squared plus z squared by the density function rho of x, y, z. That looks like a p, but it's the Greek letter rho, and of course we have dv here, the volume of the solid e. This is the formula for the moment of inertia about the x-axis. This is how we would set it up. Well, in our case, the integral actually gets a lot easier. First of all, because the density function rho of x, y, z is just going to be replaced with k. We have a constant density. We don't have a function modeling density. We just have constant density. So we know that our triple integral here will just actually be k times y squared plus z squared, or just ky squared plus kz squared is how we can simplify that. When it comes to our limits of integration, we know that our cube has side length l, which means that the limits of integration for x are going to be 0 to l because we start at the origin and the length of the side is l right there. The limits of integration for y, we start at the origin and we go out to l here, so the length is going to be l. We have 0 to l. And then the limits of integration for z, we start at the origin and the side length is l. It's a cube, so all the side lengths are equal, and we know that we're going to have side length L there. So our limits of integration are the same for all three of our variables. And then because we have the same limits of integration for each variable, it doesn't matter here what order we integrate in, whether we integrate with respect to x, y, or z first, so we can just do dx, dy, dz. And now we have our integral set up for the moment of inertia about the x-axis. If we wanted to set up the triple integral for the moment of inertia about the y-axis, we would just do i sub y is equal to, we'd have the same thing, the triple integral here from 0 to L for each limit of integration, and we would substitute k for this rho of xyz density function here. Notice that in our formula for the moment of inertia about the x-axis, we multiply by y squared plus z squared, the two variables here other than x. When we're taking the moment of inertia about the y-axis, we would multiply by x squared plus z squared, the two variables other than y. When we set up the moment of inertia about the z-axis, we'd get i sub z is equal to the triple integral, each with limits of integration from 0 to L. We'd have here, instead of y squared plus z squared instead of x squared plus z squared, we would have x squared plus y squared, the two variables other than z, and we'd multiply by a constant density of k. And we can keep the order of integration the same each time, we'll always do dx, dy, dz. So that's how you would set up the three of them, and then you'll just evaluate each one individually. We'll go ahead and go through the process here with the moment of inertia about the x-axis. All we're going to do first is integrate with respect to x. When we do, we'll get two integrals here from 0 to l. We'll get k 
xy squared plus kxz squared. We'll be evaluating this on the interval x equals 0 to x equals l dy dz. Now we go ahead and plug in x equals l and we'll get the integral from 0, 0, l, l. Plugging in l for x we just get k times l y squared plus k times l z squared. Then we subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0 for x, but of course we'll just get 0 for both of these terms, so there's no need to write a minus 0 here, we can just leave it out. So we'll have dy dz. Now we're going to integrate with respect to y because our next value here on the end is dy. So integrating with respect to y, we'll get the integral from 0 to l. Integrating with respect to y, we'll get 1 third kly cubed, and then here we'll get plus klyz squared. We're going to be evaluating this on the interval y equals 0 to y equals l, and of course we leave out here our dz. Evaluating at y equals l, we'll get 0 to l here. y equals l, we're going to get 1 third kl times l cubed, or just l to the fourth, plus k l times l is l squared, and then z squared. If we plug in y equals 0, we'll just get 0 for both of these terms. We don't need to write a minus 0, so we'll just leave it like that. And then evaluating the integral for z, integrating with respect to z, we're going to get 1 third k l to the fourth times z plus 1 third k l squared z cubed. Evaluating that on the interval, z equals 0 to z equals l. Plugging in l for z, we'll get 1 third k, l to the fourth times l is l to the fifth, plus 1 third k l squared times l cubed is l to the fifth. Again, when we plug in z equals 0, we just get 0. So this here is all we have left, and if we combine these two, we can see that we'll get an answer of 2 thirds k l to the fifth. That's the moment of inertia about the x-axis. That's how we evaluate this integral. If you go through the same steps with the moment of inertia about the y-axis, where we talked about just substituting this value instead of this one when we do about the y-axis, and about the z-axis doing x squared plus y squared, but everything else being the same, go through the same process, you'll find that you get the same answer for the moment of inertia about the y-axis and z-axis. In all three cases, you get 2 thirds k l to the fifth. So that's how you use triple integrals to find the moments of inertia about the three coordinate axes.